Howdy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to some more NASCAR Thunder 2003. Oh my goodness, so we're going to Richmond. Richmond's a barn burner. We just had Mark Martin, the cat in the hat, so to speak, right there. Gets a huge win at Homestead, and after eight races thus far this season, I would say the Ford Blue Oval camp has been dominant. I mean, think about it. Mark Martin, Rudd, Rudd, Burton, Gordon, Martin, Rudd, Burton. I mean... It has literally been Rudd and Burton going at it. Your updated point standings. Your points leader, Mark Martin, going for his second Winston Cup championship. Jeff Gordon, of course, going for that epic seventh championship. So you got the 102 points back for us. We're solidly inside the top 10, but, uh, you know, a lot of things could happen. It's a long season, guys. It's a long season. And speaking of which, we're going back to Richmond. After that, we're going to the Donington 400 night race. That's going to be some good stock car racing. We've got Talladega. And if you go back to the Daytona 500 race, which we won, thank God. We finally got Burton that Harley Gerald trophy. But if you go back to Talladega, the restrictor plate racing there is going to be incredible. For some reason, when we change the gameplay sliders to make the AI make more mistakes and have more crashes, the racing is incredible. And then after that, it's the Coca-Cola 600. So there's a lot of good things happening here. Our paint scheme for Richmond. Um, well, let's run the normal car again. Let's just run the primary. Why not? And without further ado, let's go to Richmond. Alrighty, folks. So we qualified 29th. Yeah, uh, that's going to make an interesting race right there. Oh, look at that. Wow. Uh, what's his face? Jared just blew an engine there. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so we, we qualified terribly. I'll be honest with you, the car was so freaking tight. We should have we should have made some adjustments, right? And it didn't help that I kind of skirted the wall on both of the qualifying laps. So we got to go out there. We got to keep digging. We got to find a way to get some track position. It's going to be a fun Pontiac Excitement 400. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and turn down track side, folks. Welcome to Richmond, Virginia, the site of the action for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race here on MRN. Richmond offers a little something for everyone, doesn't it, Barney? This is a fast track, even though it's less than a mile. Richmond's smooth surface gives the drivers plenty of room to maneuver and make clean passes. But you'll still see a fair share of bumping going on out there. Sasha Soares really needs a good finish in this race. He's got a long way to go on the points list. Yeah, those guys have been working so hard this year. It's a shame it doesn't really show in points. Just seems they can't keep that car out of trouble on race day. Maybe their luck will change today. Jeff Burton has really focused in on his qualifying runs this year. Yeah, but don't forget, Joe, it takes a lot of people working together to get that car starting in the top 10 every week. The 175 car is having some trouble in the points this year. Well, there's always going to be someone who has to fill in the bottom of the points list. Of course, none of these guys want to ever see their name there. Sometimes it's just not your season to shine. Here we go, folks. Richmond Raceway, folks. 400-mile event here. Um, wow. Uh, this is going to be fun. So, we need to get some points here. We're 105 out from the championship. My allergies are a little bit bothering me. So, I apologize if my vocals sound a little bit goofy. But, we're going to keep digging here. So, it's Rusty Wallace on pole. Imagine that. Jeff Gordon, who's been a hot dog this year. He's, he's doing pretty good. Johnson's up there. Wimmer, I'm telling you, man, give a attaboy to Scott Wimmer in the 43 bunch. They have done incredible this season. And I, I tell you what, it's going to be a fun race. Of course, me and Rusty Wallace had the epic finish, uh, I think it was two seasons ago here at Richmond. So, what I do know is is the car made a, uh, let's, say, let's just say it made wholesale changes after qualifying because we needed this car to be significantly looser. So I, I pretty much threw a home run uh, swing into it. If the car is still a little bit tight, I left a little bit of room to be able to adjust it. So uh, we can adjust it after our pit stops, but it's going to be a long night of racing. Now, unfortunately, with us qualifying 29th, that's going to kind of throw away opportunity for bonus points unless we try some interesting pitch strategy. 
The only caveat to that is generally here at Richmond, you'll get one driver, maybe two, that'll stay out 25 laps compared to what most people would pit at lap 20, 21. Sometimes they'll stay out to lap 28 as well. So 25 to 28, you'll expect one driver to make a Hail Mary, uh, pretty much, uh, a, you know, pit strategy run and try to stretch their field and catch a yellow and put everybody a lap down. So basically what we got to do is we got to dig. We got to dig tonight. We got to find a way to get some points and get a good finish because I tell you, um, 105 points isn't much behind, but it could get significantly worse if we have a terrible finish tonight, you know. It's a very long season. This is only race nine of the Winston Cup season. Uh, keep in mind, we're in 2007, so there'll probably be maybe around six, maybe seven more seasons of this gameplay because I'm going to try to end it when Jeff Burke actually retires. So, depending how we are in this career mode, um, you know, then that's when I'll actually end it. You know, if we're on a super long winless streak, we might end it a little bit early. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so we're digging right here. It's lap six out of forty. We're trying to get up there. I mean, I'll be honest with you, we're kind of we're kind of sluggish right now. But I do think as the AI's tires begin to wear, I think we'll actually pick up some ground because the AI is going to be slower than us once they can't turn the race car because we can still turn the car when they can't. Your top five update right now: Wallace Gordon, Wimmer, Ashton Lewis, and Tony Stewart. So you got some cats up there. Competing hard for a Winston Cup win. I don't believe Dodge has won a race this season, of course. Uh, in 2002, or at least the game uh, year this is taking place in, um, Wallace drives a Ford, so you can't you can't say he's helping out the Mopar camp. But, who knows? Anyways, trying to get around Jimmy Spencer here in the Ganassi 41. Got the 131 right there on the outside. Oh, keep digging, bud. Keep digging. We're up to 24th, though. Uh, that's the goal. Trying to get to the top 10 tonight. Ooh, a little contact there. Try to get around the 132 car. And it's it's pretty interesting how we're seeing more and more fantasy slash custom cars. And that that's kind of cool because it's like the, the older crop of the drivers is slowly evaporating. And you're starting to, get, starting to see the new guys come in, right? And it's, it's just adding a level of competitiveness to this playthrough. And I love that, you know? We gotta keep digging though. We gotta keep digging. There's Ward Burton right there. Approaching halfway on fuel. We could probably go and at least for our fuel strategy. Probably to lap 23 if we truly wanted to. But I don't think I want to stay out that long because I think someone's gonna gain some track position based on this pit sequence. So it's kind of a when do you want your tires type of thing. I, I've had moments where I pitted at the right time and uh, at least I thought it was the right time. And I lost maybe 10 car links. So it, it, it just kind of have to get a little bit lucky there. But do we have race winning pace tonight? With track position, yes. But I, I just think getting that track position is going to be a little bit more challenging uh, than I expect. Especially if this race goes flag to flag. If we don't get any cautions, uh, it's really going to put a vice on everything. Because you're not going to be able to make up that green flag uh, you know, grounds. I mean, if you, if you qualify 15th and you still can't win the race, imagine qualifying 29th. You know what I'm saying? You got to find a way to get that track position under green conditions, which is so difficult to do. And I tell you what, though, Rusty Wallace is just absolutely whipping the field tonight. He is just dominating. And it, it's pretty interesting how Ricky Rudd, you know, dominating this season. Mark Martin won last uh, last Sunday. And then we got Rusty Wallace. I mean, the old cats are still in the mix doing some Winston Cup racing. I'm going to get underneath Dale Jarrett here. Sorry, buddy. I need to get around you. Got to keep digging here. Lap 14 out of 40. Try to get around the 88 car there. Come on, buddy. Come on. There we go. There we go. Keep digging. There we go. There we go. Let's see if we get a little bit of a toe off Elliott Sadler. No, I don't think we're going to be able to. Just try to ride the bottom. Trying to get around as many cars as possible. There we go. Trying to get a little bit of a toe. No one is pitted yet, but I think you you could pit pretty soon. Judging by our fuel mods right now, we could probably actually go to maybe lap 27, 28 if we truly tried. 
Uh, we're on lap 15. We're just a little bit past halfway. So roughly call it 14 laps. Uh, you could probably run, then you hit half. So roughly about 27, 28 laps you could probably do on the tank. Maybe 29 if you save some petrol. Either way, though, I'm not going to stay out that long, though. I think I think you would just give up way too much track position uh, with the new tires. But then again, man, you just never know. You, sometimes these AIs will pull some crazy strategy out of their hind end. Uh, but anyways, we're lap 17 out of 40. I would expect pit stops at any moment. Any moment, because the fuel window is absolutely open now. Uh, and you can pit here and make it to the end. But our tires are actually pretty good shape right now, and we're gaining track position here so we're doing something right so let's just keep digging keep trying to get some good old track position and see if we can find a way to get to the front here and speaking of which uh, cats are pitting now there's two cars maybe three uh, coming down pit road there car it's getting very tight though the right front is starting to wear out uh, we might want to make a little bit of an adjustment on this pit stop Newman's coming in Earnhardt is in so we got some cats pitting here um, I, I don't think we can realistically stay out and try to lead a lap. We're just not close enough to the race leader. We would have to stay out an exponentially long time. And I just don't think uh, that would be the smart move here. I really don't. I think it would hurt us more than anything. But you want to pit at the right time. And uh, I think we're going to stay out here and then we're going to pit the next time. Because we're good on fuel, right? We're good on fuel. And honestly, I feel like with our tire wear, we're in a good spot too. So I'm going to go ahead and pit this time, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good pit sequence. And uh, hopefully we can get down pit road. We actually, what if we waited a little bit? I uh, know, let's pit now. Uh, let's pause it here and make sure we get our pit options. I was thinking if we waited a lap and let pit road clear out, we might not get stopped on pit road and boxed in. So we're not going to do any damage repair. We're going to definitely loosen up the race car, drop the PSI a little bit, Give it a little bit more takeoff on the corners and down the straightaways. Obviously, we need the car to rotate a little bit more, especially with lap traffic becoming in play now. You're going to want a car that can bottom feed. you got to be a flounder, right? you got to be on the bottom here at Richmond. you got to be able to get your nose underneath them and hold it. And uh, hopefully, we can get a good, clean pit stop here. Because, you know, one strategy that I think a lot of people don't uh, put into play here, and I never really thought about it, is, oh, look at this idiot over there with his Dollar General freaking air gun. Oh, Lord. But uh, when you're pitting and you got a lot of cars on pit road, if one of them is exiting their pit box or entering their pit box, you can get held up. And if that happens a couple times, you might lose two, maybe three, four tenths of a second down pit road that you could keep. And while that might not mean much... It could be the difference uh, in some of these one-and-a-half-mile events from having the opportunity to catch the draft and perhaps getting a run on. You just never know. You know, every uh, individual race is different on this game. You know, every event is it has a different outcome. It's That's why I love so much about the Thunder games. They didn't feel predictable. Look at that! Look at that! I just said unpredictable racing. And what do you have it right there on cue? I'm telling you guys, this is why the Thunder Games are the freaking GOAT, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's Winston Cup racing. Holy cow, man. Wow, that, that, that just put the Fruit Loops in the bowl for me. Holy moly, man. That was freaking awesome. So old Bozo McGee in the 63 car takes a, 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 ch like a chop out of the wall. Um, he gets it going, though. He didn't spin back around and throw the yellow, but he's going to have some significant damage there. That's going to hinder his performance. Unfortunately, though, I believe Scott Wimmer just pulled his car in down pit road. Stanley Stevens, so the cat who qualified into the top five. Uh, not a good showing tonight. We're going to get a top five update since the pit sequence has uh, mostly uh, ended. Obviously, there's one driver staying out. That driver is Dale Jarrett, but let's see how the rest of the top five fall. So... We're in 11th. Essentially, we're in 10th place because Bozo McGee over here has it pitted. Uh, Dale Jarrett, no disrespect. Wallace is dominating, so essentially, let's knock it down a notch, and we can see where everything's going. Of course, Wimmer um, is out uh, with the engine trouble. So that's a huge hit for the 43 bunch, and uh, more likely than not, takes them out of championship contention probably because... They're going to have to win an unbelievable amount of races to be able to be even competitive 
knowing their average finishes. So I'm not calling it, but definitely a championship ender, possibly. <laughs> but anyways, um, so Dale Jarrett is trying the ultimate contrarian strategy. Will a caution come out? The odds are not in his favor. But if one was to come out, he could perhaps have everyone a lap down, pit, keep his track position, and have a realistic uh, shot to win this race. Meanwhile, for us, every position is points. I see Ricky Craven over here in his Ford, and I'm thinking, we need to get some track position. The car is not the best one we brought to Richmond. Let's be honest, it's not the best one, but dang it, we need some points. So we're in the top 10 here. We're digging. Essentially, we'd be ninth place right now after Jarrett surrenders his track position. Who knows where he'll resume. He could be back into the top 10 ahead of us um, if he does his pitch strategy right. And speaking of which, the UPS Ford Taurus is coming down pit road to get his Union 76 race fuel and some Goodyear Eagles. Let's see how quick he does, perhaps. Uh, I mean, if you truly think about it, if you go 28, maybe 29 laps of, uh, on, on a tank, you might only need to take one tank of gas. Go back to my numbers where I said earlier, you only need 14 laps of fuel to be halfway on your tank. So essentially, you have 28 laps of gas and, you know, split it down the middle. That's two tanks. So if, if there's 12 to 10 laps to go in a race, you could take one tank uh, or one can of gas and uh, maybe two tires and, and get the track position. So, I mean, realistically, that's actually a very interesting call there if you were to do that. And perhaps maybe one day we could try that strategy, you know. Um, just just staying out as long as possible, hitting and only taking one tank of petrol, taking only two tires, and uh, see how, the, you know, how that plays out. But either way, Rusty Wallace is absolutely dominating now, and... Honestly, he's gonna probably win this race if no caution flies. But for us, we gotta hold off the 88 car who's got some very fresh Goodyears. I mean, that cat is fast, guys. Holy moly. Uh, we gotta keep digging, though. We gotta get around this 46 car, and I wanna get around Ricky Craven. But the laps are gonna fly fast. Uh, we're top 10 right now, but every point is on, the is on the line here. Every position outside the top five is three points. Uh, 46 buddy. I gotta get you out of the way. Come on now. We gotta keep digging here. Take a little bit of a toe. There we go. Dive the corner. Alright. We gotta get back around Jarrett if we can. But the car is starting to get very tight. We should have loosened up the car a little bit more. It's okay though. Yeah, the car is just not that, that Richmond field that I need. I, I, just not the car we need tonight to be able to get this car to rotate like it needs to. Keep digging here, though. So you still got Jarrett right there. You still got the 32 car, Ricky Craven. And uh, it's only a matter of time before the the, the, the Blue Deuce is going to go into victory lane because that cat is dominating. It's lap 34 out of 40. A caution would really have to fly now. Um, and he's running out of time for that. But that's okay. So it looks like Jarrett... Oh, look at that! Wow! Caution is going to wave here, folks. Uh, uh, once again... What a crazy, crazy scenario. So we had, oh my goodness, did Dale Jarrett go way up? Oh, Mark Martin, last week's winner, is literally on fire in turns three and four. Jimmy Johnson with possible damage here. Oh my goodness, championship implications here. Holy cow. Wow, it's Kurt Busch. He's going to go up in the fence. He's going to take a huge hit with Jeff Green. Bobby Hamilton making evasive maneuvers. And Kurt Busch, possibly a tire goes down. I mean, absolutely pancakes the fence. Huge damage there, but that's not all that we did see. The six car on fire. And I'll go ahead and verify this here. Let's go and look at our race stats. Uh, maybe it was it Was it 97? Because the, I swore I seen a blue, a, a blue and a black car there. That's interesting. I have no clue then. I have no clue. Uh, let's see if uh, Kurt Busch DNF though. This is crazy, folks. This is going to be one banging restart. I tell you what. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, perhaps it was Kurt Busch. Yeah, it was. Wow, that's quite interesting. I thought it was Mark Martin. So, Kurt Busch is out. Here we go. 
One lap shootout to win it. Did Rusty Wallace pit? Is that a lap down car ahead? Come on, I gotta make this thing move, man. Go, buddy, go. Seventh place, Richmond underneath the lights. Can they get around Rusty Wallace? Jeff Gordon, look at the pounce. Here comes Tony Storr. Come on, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Dang it. <laughs> what? Hold up. Bobby Labonte wins the race. The yellow didn't wave How has that even happened? How did Bobby Labonte get the lead? Oh, this is this is some Quaker State Larry McReynolds North Wilkesboro BS right here, folks. Something cheesy just happened. Oh my goodness. I'm shocked. I am absolutely shocked here. So let me get this straight. Bobby Labonte took the lead from Rusty Wallace. Okay. I, I got to go back and check the footage here. I can't go back and look at it right now. Um, but Rusty Wallace was leading when that caution came out, I think. Um, I'm shocked. Maybe by some chance the 18 was in second or third, and I forgot about it, and he passed them. Either way, a crazy caution with Kurt Busch, a action-packed night at Richmond, gives Bobby Labonte... A huge win for the Pontiac Brigade and Joe Gibbs Racing with both of their cars inside the top four. Great runs for the Pontiac Bunch. We got a 7th place finish, which considering our 29th starting spot, that's pretty good. You can say the same thing for Dale Jarrett as well. Started 26th. No laps led tonight for us, though, but we did get some good points, though. We got some good points. Atta boy to Michael Walter, Benson, and Craven on the top tens. I gotta say, man, what a banging night here at Richmond. I, I, I tell you, that was a crazy and un unexpected finish. I thought the, the blue car out front, which was Bobby Labonte, I thought that was a lap down car. Um, I guess not. And Kurt Busch, Scott Wimmer. Both having pretty good runs tonight. Well, they're gonna they're gonna be uh, yeah they're gonna be going home a little early. So a crazy caution by Kurt Busch costs Rusty Boss a huge Richmond victory. Wow, um, unscripted racing here, folks. I tell you what, this is pretty cool stuff. Um, that's why this is the goat, man. The 03 and 04 Thunder Games are the goat. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any. I'm going to do episodes of NASCAR Thunder 2003 and 2004. We're going to do a full season of this, and then we're going to hopscotch and go back to 04 career mode. But I upload these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, make sure to stay tuned for that Thunder content all week long. Holy cow, folks. Bobby Labonte steals it. I still want to go check that and make sure. I'll try to do a follow-up on the next episode. But with all that being said, folks, have a great one. Stay humble. Diecast Buffet. Signing off, folks.